There are many uncertainties in the world with the COVID-19 pandemic, but the one I'm really focused in on is can restaurants survive in a COVID-19 world and beyond? Restaurants and food are a primary reason people travel. Independent restaurants are the backbone of a great downtown, neighborhood, or community. There are places where people come together, and that is something that is not possible during a pandemic. They are now facing a crisis like never before. Describe to me what life for your business has been like during the pandemic. Well, it's definitely been a learning curve. Okay, we went from 80%, 90% in-house dining and 10% takeout, 15% takeout on a good weekend, to 100% takeout and delivery through delivery services. So it cha it's challenging because we're still running with the same menu pricing and we've just added probably another 10% in cost um, in packaging. Aluminum containers, foam containers, plastic bags, paper bags, plastic silverware, portioned salt and peppers, portioned pepper packets, uh, ketchup packets rather. So, you know, it's uh, even if the volume is there, the margins have definitely diminished. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 outbreak, restaurants across the nation were forced to lower their occupancy to 50% to eventually closing their doors to only pickup and delivery. For many restaurants, they simply cannot cover their costs on pickup and delivery alone. Delivery services like DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats can take anywhere between 20 and 30%. So that's a big chunk. If you are relying 100% on just delivery services, you will not survive. On a good day, in this restaurant industry, an independent restaurateur who can put in his pocket a nickel out of every dollar is considered pretty smart. Many times in the restaurant industry, owners are fighting to break even. On average, a full service restaurant will operate on two to 6% net profit margins. An easy way to think of that is for every dollar you spend, a restaurant is making literal pennies on that dollar. This is why restaurants need to maximize their square footage, opt for outdoor patios during the warmer months, and really need to capitalize on holidays and special events. It's a volume game. And now let's take that nickel, for example, and see what is eaten away at it. You have the extra packaging, you have a depleted volume, so your payroll is still there because you have to have people in the kitchen to prepare everything. Your national grid bill really doesn't change whether you have 10 customers or a thousand customers in a day, your national grid bill is, you know, the, the ovens are firing, the stoves are on, the lights are on, the hoods are working. And if we have people in here working, we need, you know, heat and air conditioning, depending on the time of year and, and so on and so forth. This is our French Toast Plus, okay? This is a blueberry French Toast Plus that was available Mother's Day weekend. I believe the price was $10.99. Now you could look at that and say, well, geez, $10.99 for two pieces of bread, um, and uh, a couple pieces of bacon, a sausage, and some eggs. Well, it's a lot more complicated than that. You know, first of all, this is not, you know, store-bought bread. This is a artisan type of bread, you know, with, with, you know, quality ingredients, fresh blueberries in it. So that, that per slice is gonna cost a little bit more than, than everything else. You price your menu, say, for example, eggs are wholesale. When I price the menu, we're $1.20 a dozen. So that's 10 cents an egg. Well, just before Easter, they hit uh, $80 for 30 dozen, rather. So if you break that down, basically you've just almost two and a half times, so now you're paying a quarter an egg. Now, a quarter doesn't sound a lot, but again, there's the fire that, that, that heats the grill. There's the lights that are on in the kitchen. There's the person that's back there making it. There's the other person cooking bacon. There's another guy who's got to make the French toast because it's not only your order. You might have 100 orders, and on Mother's Day, we got inundated. So you had the full kitchen as if you were open for business. But you're lacking the, this, this restaurant holds 192 people, you're lacking the benefit of having in-house customers offset those expenses. If someone ordered it through a delivery app, did you make money on that, did you break even? No, we probably came close to breaking even, because again, if I collected $11, okay, uh, $2.20 of that went to the uh, commission for the delivery service. Minimum, it could be up to $3. 
no one really knows what's going on. If we get another spike, we could be back to square one. In data taken from Yelp, it was reported that more than 50% of the restaurants listed on its platform are now marked as permanently closed. What do you, do you expect there to be a large amount of independent restaurants that go out of business, or do you think the government has done enough to offset those closures? Oh no, closures? They're not, there's a lot of people that are not going to survive. You know, I don't think any one of us independent restaurateurs knows for sure. Are you guys making money? Are yeah, you well, you know, again, um, at this point, I think profit isn't the priority as much as it is survival. We're very lucky that the local community has embraced us as they have every community has embraced their local independent restaurant tours, which is quite pleasing. But losing the benefit of uh, all these empty tables and chairs is going to be very difficult to be profitable. Um, you know, some of the government money that has trickled through is helpful, but it's a band-aid. It's not a long-term solution. See, and when you understand, when you're talking about margins, I think the important thing that a lot of the public doesn't understand, the cost of the food is only such a small piece of it. You know, your, your biggest cost are your labor, you know, your utilities, your taxes. All of that has to go into the price of that because you can estimate with history, as we have a history here, the new, new restaurant has been here for almost 14 years. You know, my family's had a restaurant on this corner for over, over almost over 70 years. You can estimate what, how many meals a day you're going to sell. So you need to incorporate a lot more than just the cost of the food in that um, calculation. You know, the food might only cost you a dollar, but by the time you go through and add up the utility cost, your breakdown, say your taxes over how many plates you did every uh, over the course of the year, your um, labor cost, your labor cost is the most intense. Everything here is made fresh, everything here is made to order. That, that makes for a very good product, but it's also a very labor intensive product. Even closed in the kitchen certain hours, we're almost at full capacity with the staff. I've worked with restaurants for years now, and throughout this pandemic, some things that you guys can do to help them out are one, follow the rules. If you have to wear a mask, do it. Don't use it as an opportunity to cause a scene. Two, be understanding. This is uncharted territory. Everyone is living a little anxiously. Be understanding of that. You don't need to throw a fit over getting a Pepsi instead of a Coke. And three, order takeout if you can. Eliminate the margin pressure on restaurants that we talked about earlier. So can restaurants survive in a COVID-19 world and beyond? Yes, but it's not going to be easy and they're going to need the community support in order to do it. Any final comments or things you want to talk about? Just, you know, thank you to my community for supporting us. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your, your kind words and your great reviews. And we'll be here with you day in and day out, right until we do get back to normal.